Welcome to my new series about the history of firearms. Today I'm going to be doing one of the most controversial firearms there are in the country today, and that is the AR-15. Now you can't really go into the history of the AR-15 rifle without going into the history of the company Armalite and some of the other variations. But make no mistake, the AR-15 was first developed before the M16, and it was first developed as a civilian sporting rifle. The Armalite Company was founded in the 1950s um, in Hollywood, California, and it was founded by George Sullivan, who worked as a patent counsel for the Lockheed Corporation, today known as Lockheed Martin. The small arms company received its funding from the Fairchild Engine and Airplane Corporation. The company would soon become Fairchild Republic, a major manufacturer of military aircraft for the U.S. military. Originally, the company focused on weapons design rather than manufacture. Instead of producing weapons themselves, Armalite focused on weapons design. The chief architect behind Armalite's weapon designs was Eugene Stoner, a young man in his 30s with a knack for weapon designs. Sullivan quickly promoted Stoner to the position of chief design engineer for Armalite. In 1954, the first weapon design from Armalite was produced, the AR-5. This is a bolt-action rifle, chambering the 22 Hornet round. It was developed as a survival rifle for flight crew in the United States Air Force. The United States Air Force needed a rifle that would be lightweight, compact, enough to stow on board a bomber in the plane's survival kit. The Air Force adopted the AR-5, calling it the M. A-1, adopting it for regular use in 1956. The AR-5 came apart, letting you stow it away, and would even float, making it ideal for use during a water landing. Modern variations in the civilian version are known as the AR-7. Despite the company having the backing of the two largest military aircraft manufacturers, Armalite originally intended to focus on making civilian weaponry rather than craft weapons for the military. These early Armalite designs were built to be taken apart into pieces and put back together, making it something that could be stored in an aircraft or a vehicle for emergency survival situations. The United States Army, looking to replace the M1 Grand, prompted the Armalite Company to, while late to the game, develop the AR-10 prototype. These were designed with a straight stock, elevated sights, and an aluminum flash hider, a recoil compensator, and a gas system. Most of the military had positive things to say about the AR-10. It was lightweight, and many of the testers thought it would be one of the best rifles they'd ever shot. Unfortunately, the barrel could not pass the torture test, uh, bursting under pressure. Although Armalite quickly introduced a steel barrel to counteract this damage, it was too late, causing the Springfield Army to advise the military not to adopt the AR-10 rifle, reporting that it would take five or more years of testing to bring the weapon up to date. Thus, the Army decided to adopt what is known as the M14, and that was adopted in 1957. This didn't stop the Armalite Company from selling the AR-10 to foreign militaries, such as the Dutch Weapons Company. In 1959, the Armalite Company struck a deal with Colt. The company managed to sell both the AR-10 and the new AR-15 design to Colt Firearms. At this point, Robert Fremont, who had been one of the major players on the design team for both weapons, heads over to Colt to help oversee the production. At this time, the AR-7 gets launched full-scale, marketed as a civilian survival rifle, although it saw some military use. In 1961, Eugene Stoner leaves uh, Armalite Company, and he takes a position as a consultant at Colt. Around that same time, the United States Army Air Force tests the AR-15, commissioning 8,500 for Air Force use. In 1963, the M-16 is born. General Curtis LeMay saw the potential in the AR-15, but acknowledged that in its current state, as it was marketed to civilians, that it would need upgrades to be able to be used as a military weapon. In 1961, 10 AR-15s were sent to South Vietnam as the United States continued to penetrate into the jungle, jungles of Indochina. In 1965, the M16 became the primary service rifle of the U.S. military. Over its time of service in the military, it did receive many upgrades, and there were many myths about the rifle being self-cleaning. The M16A1 replaced the traditional M16 rifle. In 1989, the production of the first AR-15s for civilian use began. With the AR-15 patent long expired, Jim Glazier and Carl Lewis started manufacturing the first civilian versions of the AR-15. These opened AR-15s up to the civilian market from the year 1989 to the year 1994. Many people erroneously claim that uh, you could not buy a AR-15 rifle between 94 and 2004. 
uh, you could, in fact, it just had to have certain specifications. Uh, the assault weapons ban actually showed no significant decrease in gun violence, unfortunately. And just to clarify a few points, the AR-15 was only used in very small numbers by the U.S. military as a prototype by the U.S. Air Force. The M16 is the upgraded version that is fit for military service. The AR-15 is not fit for military service. It's an amazing firearm that is great for home defense but is not great with prolonged fire sessions because it doesn't have the same heavy duty uh, parts and pieces that the M16 has. While you can put M16 parts on an AR-15, it is illegal to convert it into an actual M16 because of the rate of fire. Uh, full auto, three round burst, you're not allowed to have that. So this has been a brief history of the AR-15 rifle. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the uh, comment section, and I'm always looking for more suggestions on other rifles to make a history about.